The absolute best way to learn Linux is to read the Arch Wiki and the man pages for the commands that you want to use. Now I know some of you might say, oh, but Kenny, isn't Arch Linux an advanced distro for elitists that beginners should stay far away from? No, that's not really the case. Sure, there's some nerds out there who think that they're 200 IQ sysadmins because they memorized every single command to set up an Arch box from scratch, but now that Arch Linux ships with an automated installer, there really isn't much in the way of preventing a total noob from installing Arch versus Linux Mint or Ubuntu as long as they don't have command line phobia. And even then, there's Manjaro, which does give you a GUI installer to get set up with what is pretty much an Arch Linux box a lot faster without touching the command line right away. Now, you might be the kind of person who just thinks that they can't learn how to do things by reading a manual or reading a wiki page, and so you prefer to watch a tutorial on YouTube or even learn how to do things hands-on. Now, the hands-on approach can really be useful, especially if you have the resources to set up Linux in a virtual machine or run it on a spare computer, because that way you'll be in no danger of running a random command that you saw on the internet that deletes your entire file system. But when it comes to Linux YouTube tutorials, I found that nine times out of 10, what you're getting is a more verbose, yet less detailed and often wrong version of the Arch Wiki or a man page or some other kind of written documentation for what you're trying to learn. And that pretty much applies to everything. I see so many hours long tutorials for programming languages and different technical things. And like, who the hell is even able to memorize every little detail from a 10 hour plus C++ tutorial. When you need to go back and reference something, which will inevitably happen, you're gonna spend several minutes just scrolling through the YouTube timeline in order to find that section of the video, and that's precious time that you could have spent dabbing on nerds with your minimal HTOP screenshots. So yeah, man is unironically how a real man learns Linux. But if you're like me and you lose yourself in giant walls of white text on a black background, then you're gonna love to have some kind of syntax highlighting in your man pages. And there's a few ways to go about this. The approach that I like, which doesn't require installing any new programs, is to simply use Vim for navigating your man pages instead of less. You can do this by setting Vim or NeoVim as your man pager in your Bash RC, like I did right here on line 14. And once you've done this, when you go to run the man command for grep, for example, you're going to be navigating this manual in Vim, and this man page is going to inherit the syntax highlighting from your Vim theme. And another benefit to this is that you have all of the navigation features of Vim at your disposal. So if you wanted to mark part of the document to jump back to it, you can do that. Uh, you can fold text inside of the document. You can search for regex patterns, etc. So this gets you better looking man pages, but man pages themselves are still very, very detailed. Like if I were to turn on line numbers and go to the bottom of this document for grep, which I'm gonna zoom out a little bit because it's too zoomed in, uh, you can see that it's almost 800 lines long. And FFmpeg is even worse. The full documentation for that command is over 40,000 lines long. Too long, didn't read, which is also the name of the next helper tool that I recommend installing. There's several different versions of TLDR that you could use. Personally, I prefer the TLDR implementation of it because this is a bit faster than most of the other TLDR implementations and it's written in Rust. So what more could you possibly want? And this can be installed through Cargo or through your system's package manager. It's in the standard Arch Linux repository if you're running Arch, by the way. So make sure that you run TLDR with two hyphens in order to update or pull in those pages before using TLDR the first time. And you should also run that if a TLDR isn't available for whatever command you want a TLDR for. So if I run a TLDR for FFmpeg, for example, 
we get a much shorter version of the man page with some of the more common examples that you would actually use. Same thing if I run TLDR for grep. Again, much shorter version of it with the examples that you're most likely to use. And this is in a very similar format to the cheat sheets that a lot of people love, except this is available offline and it's available in your command line instead of having to go through the browser to get it. So this is a very, very handy helper command to add to your Linux toolbox. Now, man pages and TLDRs for individual commands are very helpful, but if you wanted to make some major changes to your systems, they're probably not going to be enough. Like you're not going to find a man page for how to set up virtualization, for example. So that is where the ArchWiki comes in. Now, obviously, the ArchWiki is most helpful if you're actually running an Arch-based system, but 90% of Linux distros are really the same, and they just have differences like desktop environments, which are fairly trivial. I mean, a desktop environment could be installed on any other distro. The really big differences are when you start getting into different init systems, which is why I recommend the ArchWiki because it's the most well-documented system D distro that's out there. If you wanted documentation for a Runit or an OpenRC distro, then I would probably recommend going into the Gentoo Wiki and just ignore the parts that are specifically about source-based systems if you're not using a source-based system. The Hyperland page in the Arch Wiki is a pretty good example of what I'm talking about. So this gives you a whole lot of information about Hyperland and how to configure it. And it has links to other things like the Wayland compositor, for example, because if you're going to run Hyperland and you're currently on an X11 implementation, then you're gonna to have to configure this first and you're gonna to have to read through the documentation to do that. Uh, now, just like the cheat sheets that we looked at earlier, most people are viewing this documentation, the ArchWiki, in their browser. And the problem with that is the browser is a very high level piece of software that won't work unless your display server, your desktop environment, and your internet connection are all working correctly. And there's a good chance that one or more of those things will break when you're making a major switch from like X11 to Wayland and Hyperland. So before doing anything like this, install Wikiman to your system and download the Arch Wiki or the Gentoo Wiki. And hell, there's even documentation for FreeBSD if you're running one of those systems. Now it's worth pointing out that these wikis can get kind of large. The Arch Wiki, for example, weighs in at 160 megs. I'm sure that most of you have enough free space for that because storage is cheap these days, but I just thought it was worth mentioning. So if I were to run Wikiman and then search for Hyperland, I always forget how Hyperland is spelled, H-Y-P-R-L-A-N-D. Uh, here we have the page for it, and you can see, if I zoom out a little bit, that this is exactly the same as what we saw in the Arch Wiki on my browser. And you've got all the links to everything, like if I go to uh, installation, and let's see, like let's go into WL Roots Git, for example. These are all hyperlinked. Okay, so we can go into that page now. And this is all being viewed offline. This isn't using a, a internet connection or anything like that. As you saw, I had it all downloaded onto my system and it's available in my terminal. And it would also be available in a TTY, which is really important because like I said, if you're trying to make a major change like switching display servers, then there's a good chance that when you reboot, all you're gonna have is that text console and then troubleshooting at that point is gonna be a lot harder because you're gonna have to pull up the Arch Wiki from another device and then you can't copy and paste commands. It's a real pain in the ass if you've ever been there. So check out these programs that I showed you today. Links to all of them are in the video's description. Like and share this video to hack the algorithm and buy some of my merch from based.win. 10% automatic discount is available at checkout when you pay in Monero XMR. Have a great rest of your day.